Zion Lutheran Church of Wilton, Iowa, invite you to worship with them. We are your neighbors and friends in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a blessed assurance we have that our sins are removed and we have forgiveness and life eternal in Jesus' name. We welcome you this morning and we'll follow the order of Matins on page 219. Uh, please note we are reading the liturgy. Uh, and that includes the canticle hymn that is later on. We're singing the two hymns, specific verses, so please uh, note those. Let us rise for our service. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. O oh, come, let us worship him. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The Lord works with a false hope for salvation and by his great might it cannot rest him. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him on those who hope in his steadfast love. That he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in death. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you.
the Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday after Trinity, is found in Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 4. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us. So that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. 
let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes people just happen to have the most perfect name that just fits them. I can think back to the Olympic sprinter from Jamaica who for a time was the fastest man alive. His name was Usain Bolt. Then there was this uh, baseball player who played in the field whose name was Prince Fielder. There was a tall basketball player who dunked a lot. and His name was Jim Duncan. And there was a race car driver named Scott Speed. In the hymnal, you'll find a hymn that was written by an English poet who was good with words. His name was William Wordsworth. Sometimes people just have the most perfect name. Today, Jesus does something very rare. He names a character in one of his, in one of his parables. And it's the only time he does it. And he gives him the perfect name, Lazarus, which means God has helped. Now, we're not used to names in Jesus' parables. We're used to referring to the characters in kind of generalities. You know, like the priest who walked on the other side of the road in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Or the foolish man who built his house on the sand. Or that one shepherd who left the 99 and went looking for the lost one. But today we have a name. And since he's named by Jesus, it's the perfect name. Lazarus. God has helped. We don't see how, because we don't understand how God helps us in the most way. We don't see as Jesus sees. All we see are this man's open sores and the dogs licking them. Jesus sees ears that God has filled with his word and that he believes. All we see is a beggar with an empty stomach. But Jesus sees a man so stuffed with God's word that has faith in him that will bring him to the comfort of heaven. We look at Lazarus and we say, now there's a guy who needs help. <laughs> But Jesus sees a guy who has already received help in the most important way. He has been given faith 
that needs no miracles, no signs, no proof, no good feelings. And that's as good as gold. But we don't really see that. The reason we don't really see it is because we ourselves have our priorities on the material things, like the rich man in the five, and his five brothers. The rich man ended up in hell not because he kicked Lazarus around or that he made fun of him or even ignored him, but because his priorities were all wrong just like ours. That's why it's so difficult to keep our attention in a sermon, because our mind is elsewhere. It's why our cookbooks are more worn than our Bibles. It's why we find sitting in front of internet so enthralling, and sitting in church so boring. We have great interest in the lives of celebrities and strangers. But we have little interest in God. Based on our priorities, how easy it would be for God to just lump us all in with the rich man and his brothers and let us suffer the same fate. But sometimes, People just happen to have the perfect name. Jesus gave Lazarus the perfect name because God helped him to faith in the Messiah. But even perfectly named, and better good news for us, is the name of the one telling this parable. And he's not just some character in a parable. He's real. Just as our neglect of God's word has been real. And his name is Jesus. Which means God is salvation. That's not just a name. That's the perfect name. The name given by God, the name that is above all other names. Lazarus' help was in that name. And so is ours. Because our priorities can get so easily out of whack, we needed a Savior whose priorities remained firm. Loving it, treasuring it so much that he fulfilled it by living and dying for us. Because we're often too busy to think of those in need, he never was. Because we've tried to build a life on the sand of middle-class comforts, he came to live in poverty, and be very uncomfortable as he dragged our sins to the cross in order to suffer the anguish of hell for us. Because we're sheep who have done our share of wandering away from God's word, he came to be that shepherd who laid down his life and took up took it up again in the resurrection so that he could find us and gather us and keep us until he brings us to the comfort of heaven. As we look to Jesus, then we are looking to our salvation. Look at Jesus, for then we are looking at someone who was very rich, but for our sake became very poor. Look at Jesus' Lazarus-like life and rejoice. Look at those open ears doing the Father's will 
even as he is in plain pain. Look at Jesus' hungry stomach and realize that his hunger is for us to be with him forever. Look at Jesus' mouth. Jesus, who is God's word in the flesh, but is most eloquent when he is surrounded by his accusers and says nothing. Jesus has given us his name in our baptism. His strong name, his saving name. His name has been placed on us. That's why we're called Christian. But really, we're also a Lazarus. Because every Christian is a Lazarus, one whom God has helped. He has helped us out of hell and out of judgment and away from the devil and away from the law's accusations and placed us safely in his presence where he hungers to feed us with his salvation found in crumbs that are his very body. Crumbs that forgive us and renew our faith and enliven our love for God's word and even gives us eyes to see Jesus in the guise of our needy neighbor. Sometimes people just have the perfect name. And baptized into Christ, so do we. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and read our canticle hymn. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God, to be the Lord, the Father everlasting, by all the earth adored. To you, all angel powers, cry aloud, the heavens sing. The cherubim and seraphim, their praises to you bring. O holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, your majesty and glory fill the heavens and the earth. The band of the apostles in glory sing your praise. The fellowship of prophets their deathless voices raise. The martyrs of your kingdom, a great and noble throng, sing with the holy church throughout all the world this song. O all majestic Father, your true and only Son, and Holy Spirit comforter forever three in one. You, Christ, are King of glory, the everlasting Son. Yet you, with boundless love, sought to rescue everyone. You laid aside your glory, were born of virgin's womb, were crucified for us, and were placed into a tomb. Then by your resurrection, you won for us reprieve. You opened heaven's kingdom, to all who would believe. You sit in splendid glory, enthroned at God's right hand, upholding earth and heaven by forces you command. We know that you will come as our judge that final day. So help your servants you have redeemed by blood, we pray. May we with saints be numbered where praises never end, in glory everlasting. Amen, O oh Lord. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to include Hazel Irvin and also Gordon Arnold.
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray. O oh God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing, grant us your grace to keep your commandments that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name would be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, especially Keith, Andy, Barbie, Barb, Shirley, Pastor Tom Parrott, Hazel, Gordon, those in the Wilton Retirement Community and in the Lutheran Home in Muscatine, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Lord, grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. We pray in Christ's name, amen. O Lord, lead us not into temptation, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
Good morning once again. Glad you were able to make it out today. It's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. Uh, just one announcement that our confirmation will be held the last Sunday of this month, and so communion will be held on that Sunday. Uh, and uh, we welcome and invite all of you to join us for that service as well. Any other announcements that need to be made? There's a couple of meetings that were postponed from last week and rescheduled for this week. Please note those if you're on those boards. May God richly bless each and every one of you, and I'll greet you outside. Give me a few minutes to get out of my robes. God's blessing. Contents and views expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this cable company or its commission.